Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn Divi layouts into reusable wireframe. So this is the final design we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to use Photoshop to create our placeholder images. And also we're going to use our starting point as a landing page. We're going to create a brand new page and call it wireframe. So I'm just going to come over here to pages, click on add new. And then I'm just going to call this wireframe. Click on use the Divi Builder. And then I'm going to switch over here to the Visual Builder. And then over here, we're going to choose a pre-made layout. So the layout we need here is the food catering layout. So let's search for it. So we're just going to come over here to food and drink just to narrow these down. And here it is. I'm going to click here. And then the one we need is the landing page. So right now it's the one that's selected. So I'm going to go ahead and click on use this layout. Great. So now we have our layout loaded. So I'm just going to delete this top section over here like that. And then I'm just going to publish this page to make sure that it's saved and I have it on my website. Great. So now that everything is saved. Okay. So the next stage now is to create our placeholder images because when you create a wireframe, ideally we don't want to use the actual images on the wireframe. So to do that, we're going to use Photoshop, but uh, you can also use any image manipulation program like GIMP or even Illustrator. So in my case, I have Photoshop loaded. So I'm going to come over here and uh, load Photoshop and I'm going to create a brand new document. So I'm going to come over here, click on create new. And then over here on my dimensions, I just want to make sure that I have a pixel selected. So for the width, it's going to be 800. And the height is going to be 1029. And then over here, our resolution needs to be at 72. And then I'm going to click on create. Great. So now that we have our dimensions in place, the next thing I'm going to do now is to add a color to this. So over here, I'm going to click on the foreground color and then just select my gray. So I'm just going to go with um, maybe 6E, 6E, 6E. So, but it doesn't matter what shade of gray you're going to use. So I'm going to click here on OK. OK, so the next thing we're going to do now is to apply our color onto this shape. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hit uh, my option backspace. So if you're in a PC, it's Alt backspace. OK, and then what you may also want to do is to label this. So I'm just going to add my dimensions of this image. So it's 800 by 1029. Okay. So I need to change the color here so we can read it. So I'm going to come over here on the top and I'm just going to make it white like that. And then just say, okay. So this needs, this is meant to be 800. Great. So now that I have my dimensions here, that's looking good. I'm just going to place this in position. Great. So now it's time to save this. So to save this, the quick shortcut here is shift option command S. So I'm just going to hold down all those keys at the same time. Now this allows you to save for the web. So now that I have this over here on the top, I'm just going to change this preset to JPEG and the quality can be 60. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm just going to click on done. So what you need to do next is to create another size, which is 400 by 400 and also 48 by 48 just using basically the steps that I've just shown you. Okay, so now that we are ready with our images, the next stage now is to go back to our main website that we're working on. So for this to really work as a wireframe, we need to go in and delete all images and also gradients and colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our top section over here. I'm going to click on my settings. And then I'm going to come on flit filter and then I'm going to click on modified style. So pretty much I want to see where everything has been modified. So what I'm going to do here, I can see there's an image. I'm going to go ahead and delete that image. So that's all that has been modified here. So that's fine. I'm going to go ahead now and save. Okay. So next you're going to move on to this section here and just make sure that we don't have any gradients on it. So I'm going to come over here to filter modified style. So as we can see, there's nothing here. So that's great. But now, uh, the problem that we're going to have is distinguishing where these sections end. So the one thing that you can also do is to go into these sections and give them a gray color. So this color can be alternating just to show where all our sections end. So over here, I'm in my uh, section settings. I'm going to click on background and I'm going to give this a background color. So you can just use a light gray for this. So I'm going to go with this color right here. If you want to make it a bit dark, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to make it dark here so you can see just in case that on my recording here, you can't see the color. 
I can go ahead now and save. So as we can see here, it looks like we have a gradient. Again, we need to get rid of all gradients and all images. So I'm going to come over here into my uh, module settings. And this is my full header settings. So again, I'm going to come over here to filter modified styles. And now we can see that we have a gradient over here. So I'm just going to go ahead now and delete that. So now we don't have any gradients. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. Now let's move on to our next section. So over here, I think it's clear. We can see the background is white. And then um, we have this gray here around this word about us. So I'm going to go in and delete that. So I'm going to come over here to filter modified styles. And it is not there. So I'm going to close this. So I guess this has to be in my row settings. So again, I'm going to click on row settings, filter modified styles, and then I'm going to delete it from here. Great. So now I can go ahead and save. Okay, so what you need to do is to go ahead and delete all background sections, colors, and images just by using the modified style. So I'm just going to do this one more time. So I'm, again, I'm going to click here on this uh, section settings, click on filter, modified styles. So I can see here a lot has been going on. So I'm going to delete this image. And then here we have a gradient. I'm going to delete the gradient as well. And our color here is plain. So that's good. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. So that's all you need to do. Go ahead and do that to all the sections. And then we're going to go in and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now I've deleted all my section backgrounds and also the gradients. Great. So now let's continue working on this. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to make some changes to my button. So I'm going to come over here and click on my module settings for the button. Okay, so what we're going to do with this button is we're going to get rid of the color and any styles that are applied to the button so that we have a flat design which doesn't influence us as we're designing our page. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on button, and then I'm just going to change my color here. So the color I'm going to use is this dark gray. So I'm going to use the same color both for my button background color and also the border color. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so now you can see it's a solid color. Now on the top here, we can also go to our filter and take a look at our modified styles and see what else has been modified. So over here, I can see that we have a box shadow. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, so now that we have our design, the next thing we're gonna do is to apply the same design to the rest of the buttons. So if we were going to do this the long way, we would need to go into each and, each and every one of these buttons and make the exact same steps but I'm going to show you something that can save you a lot of time. So if I come over here to the button and right click, I can click on copy button styles, and then I can apply the styles over here. So I'm just going to save this for now. And then I'm going to paste my button styles. So you can see here, my button styles has been uh, applied. And then I'm just going to do this to every instance like that. Okay, so that has definitely saved us a lot of time. Okay, so the next step now is to give these sections some background colors just to distinguish these from the rest. So I'm going to come over here, click on my settings, background, and then I'm going to add my background color here. Then I'm going to move on to the next one, which is the gallery. Save that. And then we're also going to do the testimonials. Okay. So we also have this uh, section here, which has a counter. So we're going to go in and add a darker gray so that we can see it clearly. Okay. So we're going to go with this and then save. And I think that's all we need to do for now. Okay. So now that we all, we have all this in place, the next stage now is to replace all our images with our placeholder images that we created in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to come all the way here and go into our image module. Click here, and then I'm going to come over here and select my images. So to make things easier for me, I'm just going to upload all my images right away. Okay. So now all my images are in the media library. So now I'm just going to have to replace this. So now I can click on upload an image. So as you can see, now my image has been replaced with our placeholder image that we 
created in Photoshop. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to come over here and these little icons, I'm going to do the same thing as well. So I'm going to click here on my module settings. And then I'm going to replace that with my icon that I created in Photoshop. So what you need to do now is to go in and replace all these little icons with our new placeholder image that we created in Photoshop. Okay, so now I've added all my little icons. So the next step now is to come over here and uh, change this more info color to a different color. Okay, so I'm going to click here on my settings filter. I'm going to go to modified style so I can quickly find it. And here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a find and replace. So I'm going to right click, click on find and replace. So this is the uh, color that I need to find. And I'm going to replace this with a gray or a light gray. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to click on within this section. And then I'm going to replace. Great. So as you can see, all my links now have been replaced, which is fantastic. I'm going to save. Next, I'm going to come over here to my images. So we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're just going to go in and replace the image with the one that we created earlier on. And we, this is the 400 by 400 like that. Save. So what we need to do now to distinguish these, you just need to um, change a few settings and I'll just show you how to do it on one of them. So again, I'm going to come over here to my module settings, select my image, upload. So as you can see, these images here are the same sort of um, color. So to make some slight changes to that, I'm going to come over here to design filters, play around here with the opacity. So now I'm just going to drag this to maybe 69%, uh, save that. And then for each and every one that we're going to add here, we're just going to add different opacity values so that we can see that they are different images. Okay, so these are all my variations of my colors. So now I'm going to go ahead and save. So as you can see, everything is all grayscaled now. So what you can also do is you can actually go in and uh, use a find and replace to change the fonts of this layout. So let's say I want to come over here and change this font. So I can always go into my module settings over here. Click on design. Okay, so this is my H2 uh, text right click, find and replace. So let's say you can find this font and uh, within this page, you want to replace it with, uh, let's say Poppins. Okay. And then I can click on replace. So this will take a while, but all the instances where we have this font is going to be changed. So as you can see now it's changed. So that is great. So the next thing you want to do now is to uh, make sure that this is saved somewhere because these wireframes can be used over and over again. So to do that, we want to save this to our library. So there are two ways to do this. You can either save the whole page or you can save individual sections. So to save this to the library, you can come over here to the top left and click this little icon to save to the library. So you can give this a, a name. So let's call this a uh, hero, create a new category. So we can call this a uh, hero category and then you can save it to the library, move on to the next item and just continue saving this. So this, for example, could be the about us. Or the other way you could do this is by saving the whole page to the library. So we can just come over here and give this layout a name and then you can save this to the library. Now, by doing that, it means that you can use this layout over and over again and also the sections. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this layout, exit the visual builder. Okay, so let's say you want to add the section that we've just created. So all you have to do is to click this plus button, click on add from library, and we can see it here labeled hero. So I'm going to click here. And as you can see, it has now been added. So that is how you use all your saved items in the library. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.